BandHelper offers several ways to quickly populate your account with data. If you already have a collection of documents with lyrics or chords in them, you can batch import the documents, and then BandHelper will create a song for each document and attach the document to it. You'll have to do this one on your computer. First, collect your documents into a folder. You can see that I have a few different file types here, PDFs, which are best, Word files, and a chord profile. Then zip the folder. The function for this will vary on different computers. On a Mac, you can right-click the folder and select Compress. Then log into the BandHelper website and go to the Repertoire Documents page. Click the Batch Import button at the top of the page and select the zip file you just created. Select the Add New Songs option, then click Submit. It might take a few minutes for the zip file to upload. After it does, you'll see a confirmation message, and you'll see the files listed on this page. More importantly, we can go to the Repertoire Songs page, and here we'll see that a new song was added for each document. For PDF and Word documents, the song contains just a title, and the document is attached, and you can now enter more song details if you want. For Chord Pro documents, the song contains whatever data was in the file. And instead of attaching the file to the song, BandHelper copied the lyrics and chords into the Lyrics field. If you don't have documents, but you do have a collection of recordings, you can follow the same process to create songs from those. Copy the recordings into a folder on your computer, zip it, and upload it on the Repertoire Recordings page. Just remember that audio files are much larger than documents and will take much longer to upload. You might also have to split your recordings into a few folders and upload a few zip files because the size limit for each zip file is 500 megabytes. If you have both documents and recordings and want to create songs that use both, you can batch import the documents using the Add New Songs option as we did. Then batch import the recordings without this option. And then BandHelper will attach the recordings to the songs that were created from the document import, rather than creating all the songs again. And that assumes that the file names of your recordings are the same as the file names of your documents, so BandHelper can match them up. We saw how a batch import containing chord profiles created songs containing the chord pro data. You can also import chord profiles one at a time, but you have to do this from the mobile apps. In iOS or Android, you can go to the Repertoire Songs page and click the Import button at the top of the list. Then navigate to where your chord profile is saved and select it. BandHelper will create a song containing the info in the file. On iOS only, you can also push a chord profile into the app by selecting it from a different app and using the Import with BandHelper option. And then BandHelper will open and import the file the same way. One more option, only for iOS, is to click the Import button and select Playlist. Then you can browse your iTunes playlists. When you select one, BandHelper will create a new song for each song in the playlist, including any info contained in iTunes, like the artist, duration, and lyrics if those are included. With this function, BandHelper also creates a set list that matches the iTunes playlist, but you can delete that if you don't need it. The songs you imported won't be affected. There's one more option for adding batches of songs, but we have to go back to the computer for this. And we can refresh to see the songs we just imported from the tablet. In a spreadsheet program like Apple Numbers or Microsoft Excel, we can set up a data file containing song information laid out in columns with a different song on each row. The column layout is specified on the Importing Data tutorial of the BandHelper website, so you can check that page to see exactly what data you can include here and what order to put it in. When your file is set up, the format you save it in is important. 
you should save as a tab delimited text file with UTF-8 encoding. These options will look different on different computers, but remember to find and select tab delimited text and UTF-8. Without these settings, the file might not import completely or might not import at all. After saving the data file on your computer, you can open the Bandhelper website and go to the Repertoire Songs page. Then click the Batch Import button, select your file, and click Submit. Bandhelper will show a preview of the songs it's going to create. If that looks good, click Continue. And now we can see the songs we added. You can also use data files to import batches of MIDI presets, or contacts. The process is the same, but the layout of the data files are different. And you can also find these specs on the Importing Data tutorial page. With all these import options, you cannot update the info you imported by adjusting the source and then importing it again. Once you import some data, you'll have to make any edits to that data in Bandhelper, so it's worth double-checking your data before importing. And it's also a good idea to do some tests with a small amount of data to get comfortable with the import functions and then move on to larger imports. Bandhelper is only as useful as the data you put into it. So hopefully these functions will help you build up an account full of valuable data that you can then share with your bandmates and access from all your devices.